of 14 to 2014 uh, remains indelible in the memories of many Nigerians. Yes. Being today, over 200 school girls were kidnapped from the government's girls' secondary school in Chibok, Bono State. These critical stakeholders have converged on the Unity Fountain in Abuja in high spirits, voraciously demanding the safe release of girls believed to be in captivity. The BBOG approbation, which means bring back our girls, is a movement widely recognized by many across the country, which was birthed after the unfortunate incident. We, the Kibaku, are deeply disappointed with the pervasive failure by successive governments of Borno State since 2014 in their inability or refusal or failure to rescue all our daughters for a decade now. Within this time, 48 parents have lost their lives mostly due to heart conditions and other health-related reasons. In a similar vein, other stakeholders make their demands while appealing for the intervention of the government. When I hear Nigerians talk anyhow about Chiba girls, all I do is pray for them. I pray for those Nigerians. There are many ways to put a curse on yourself. Many ways to put a curse on yourself. But the worst way to put a curse on yourself is to not be bothered about what has happened to your fellow human being. To be callous toward your fellow human being. You already cursed yourself. Nobody needs to curse you. And here we are today. The key message, disclosure, accountability, closure. The event took a sad turn when one of the mothers broke down in tears. When she was able to pull herself together, she had this to say. It has not been easy waiting for my daughter's return. All I want is to see my daughter dead or alive. It's a decade now since the Chibo girls were adopted by the Boko Haram terrorist group. The relentless determination of the Bring Back Our Girls movement and other critical stakeholders is the driving force for the demand of the release of the 82 girls still believed to be in captivity. Hopefully, the present government of Nigeria takes drastic decisions to ensure that these girls are reunited with their loved ones in no time. From the Unity Fountain in Abuja, Kumbi Aboluwade, Channels Television News. All right, welcome back. Well, yes, that is what we're going to start off with here today on sunrise today we've got elder ayuba john bassa here with us he is the national coordinator goza christian community association good morning thank you for joining us today thank you very much and good morning nigeria yeah we will also be joined by amina ali in uh, she was also kidnapped at the time but she escaped from uh captivity so we'll also bring her in as we progress here so um, let me start with you here in the studios. Um, Goza happens to be one of the communities affected by this kidnap incident at the time. So there were many who didn't understand, I reckon even till now, in terms of the rationale, why was it difficult for that to stop? Those who, we understand some residents were also converted into some of those who were kidnapping. They wonder where were the elders, what were the parents doing? So all of that lingered at the time. So given the benefits of hindsight while you were in that community. Ten years on, what goes through your mind about all of this? A lot of things uh, goes into one's mind when you remember what Boko Haram really did uh, in this country. If I think of my area, Goza, at the beginning it was just like a joke 11 years ago. And uh, when it started, it started using our own people. In fact, I have uh, more than 65 members of my family who joined the Boko Haram. 65? Yes. What was the attraction? My blood rela relations, both from paternal and maternal uh, family. Wow. The attraction was um, illiteracy and then the influence of uh, the Boko Haram who came to abattoir because most of them are butchers uh, in Medugri abattoir so 
Uh, it's from there they've been brainwashed and they went and sold all their properties in Medjugorje, uh, taking the funds to the headquarters of Boko Haram for court and in court working for God. You know, uh, uh, some of them push back their families, go back to the village, go back to the mountain. We saw the families coming back. What, what is wrong? Uh, Daddy sold the house and uh, gave the money for uh, work of uh, God. And uh, we were told to come back home and, and leave. So, you know, ah, ah, we, so many, you know, dramatic information. Uh, uh, as if it's a drama or so, can you one believe it or can one not believe it? Uh, what, until it comes to us in, within the Goza town itself. Not really the village, the, the villages. And uh, very close to me and in front of my house. Four of my friends were killed. <laughs> and we know the people who shot them. They are also from our family. <laughs> so, and then suddenly the incidents of Abattoir in, in Goza, where 30 men were slaughtered like animals. Four out of them were my uncles. Wow. Very close uncles. So loving. And they were slaughtered because they don't have the same ideology with that of Boko Haram. And they claim to bring a new religion. So out of a religion, you know, and they tend to see any other person that does not believe their, in their own ideology is not a good believer, quote and unquote. If you are a nominal uh, Muslim, no, 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 you are not fit to be. If you are a Christian, you are not fit to be. They have their own different belief, different religion, but carve out of another religion. So that, 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 that happens. I have sisters that were kidnapped, especially in my maternal village uh, at the mountainside at that time. No one who could, could go to the mountain and protect anybody. But so, if it was just about working for God, mm. some say you may not have as many people because they think the economy was part of it. They might have been making money, and so they decided it was difficult to leave and come back to the community. What would they fall back on? Yeah, making money does not belong to those who are being used to work for Boko Haram. Their brain has been brainwashed to believe in God, while their leaders do not believe what these soldiers or fighters believe. They, 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 there's a kind of, uh, you, you teach using lies to entice others to use them for your advantage. None of those prominent leaders sold their houses. None of them sent their children to join the, the, the troop of fighters or Boko Haram Kodar in court. None of them. In fact, one of my uncle happens to be one of their Amir who uses my house as his headquarters in Goza in charge of women that have been adopted. They will, they will, yeah, adopted they will. or kidnapped? Kidnapped and adopted or whatsoever, they will bring it to his house, he's in charge. He will be the one to appoint the woman to, to, to sections of Boko Haram's uh, uh, in, the, in, in the creeks. You, five of you, go and serve as cooks to a certain Boko Haram camp in a certain place. You go there, you, I order you to marry this one. I order you, he is in charge of women. I was speaking so, about which. We have uh, Amina Ali Nkeki, as I did introduce her earlier. She was one of those who, were, who was kidnapped, and I think she was the very first that escaped cap captivity as well. She joins us virtually. Good morning, Amina. Good to see you, and thank you for joining us on the program. So you, you clearly have gone through a lot. So if you don't mind, could you then tell us, what can you tell us about what transpired and how you got away? Um, as it says, uh, you say, my name is I mean, I mean, I mean, So, um, among the years where I got set in 2014, then I'm the first one who escaped in 2016. Indeed, I mean, uh, we are so happy to have you with us um, on Sunrise Daily. Thank you so much for joining us. And yes, your story was indeed a remarkable one because uh, two years after uh, the initial abductions to pla took place, people had assumed or some of were already beginning to give up hope of, you know, 
you people ever returning. And yet, when we saw you on, on national television, we knew that there was hope that, you know, the rest of the girls could be returned. You, alongside your baby, who was four months old at that time, uh, were rescued. And a man whom, you know, said he was your husband. Um, I don't know how that has panned out now, but we know that in 2017 you got into university. Is, is that correct? So tell us, 10 years after the abduction took place, how, how much progress would you, uh, would you say you've made? Um, uh, that incident, does it still scar you in, in many ways? Please talk to us. Okay. Uh, which can I say the first time again? First time I didn't get to. Can you hear me? Yeah. Great. I was asking, I said, 10 years after that, that incident occurred, how do you feel? Do you still think about it? Okay. Do you still think about that incident 10 years after? Well, not yet, because for now, I'm somewhat I'm alive, so nothing else that I can talk about. I'm okay for now. I'm just praying that some of my sister will be back. How are you doing? What are you currently doing? Are you in school? Are you done with school? Are you back home? Can you tell us a bit more? No, I'm still schooling in Yola. So I'm studying mass communication. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> that's certainly uh, very good to know. So how many more years do you have before you're done? Uh, now I'm in my second year, so... I still have some years to I'm happy to hear that. What about your baby? What happened to your baby? Yeah, uh, she's fine and she's living here in Yola with me. Okay. Uh, so I don't know, when you think about the rest of your sisters, as you call them, um, do you sometimes believe that they can still be returned 10 years after? Yeah, it is. And I still have that hope that they will miss one thing. I'm happy to hear that. Have you been through some counseling since, um, since the incident happened? I was asking if you've been through counseling. Counseling. Um. Oh, I, I, maybe we'll just see if we can uh, try that connection again and see if you can uh, hear. I think there might be some distortion with that one. But Elder here, I mean, you might have related with several persons who uh, also kidnapped and got back. It's usually difficult to deal with, but she pretty strong, at least going through all of that. She, she's happy to be alive. I mean, who wouldn't be? But in terms of how we've approached all of this, do you think that we, the government actually has an understanding of what really is going on and how to approach it? Hey, uh, Chamberlain, they have ample information to act on, but... Um, lack of priority they refuse to prioritize this issue if they had done that uh, these people are not living in the moon they know exactly where they are they do communicate every day uh, uh, oh how comes the issue of swapping uh, with the book uh, between boko haram and the other adopted girls because they they can communicate they know where they are and each government is just using them as a, a kind of pressing card. Uh, let me produce five to make my name better. I can produce ten during campaign to make my name better. Do they actually think like that? Chamberlain, nothing happens. How much is Borno State? And they are within Borno State 
How much is the whole of Borno State? For 10 years, you couldn't know where these girls are, and you cannot find uh, out where they are. And then where are, are those ones coming from? Are they coming from Cameroon or Chad? They are within the, each one of them who happens to get again freedom, they will tell you, we are in so-so-so -so -so village. We've been in so-so-so -so -so place. Within the same state, within the same state, the hundred and something that uh, regain freedom, did you not ask them where and which villages? Where do you think the other ones are? Uh, where, what of the 1,000 and something uh, Boko Haram that are being rehabilitated? Don't they know? Can't, if you prioritize them, prioritize it. So, so we, we have given you grace and we are accepting you just as you are, instead you know, of... Uh, uh, you also did say you were, you, you, your family members yes. were involved in this. Yes. Was there communication between themselves and members of your family and yourself while they were there or at any point whatsoever? Of course. Especially, uh, most of their families in, in, in Goza town, especially that, uh, those that are related to me, more than five times I've been sending RAM for... Uh, Wait, who sends naming. RAM? You send them or they send you? Yes, the you, family will cry that we have a baby in the camp. But naming, naming ceremony is fixed for seven days because they are, they are Muslims. I will send money for RAM. To them? The dad will call me. Thank you for doing that, but you are still a target as far as I'm concerned. That's a very strange situation. And but, then, let me, but let me just quickly put this, because yes. I remember when you wow. were having that, when you started speaking, mm -hmm. you were saying that, you know, when you think about what was Goza, I mean, when, you know, what used to happen there, it does appear that attacks now have subsided, have they? What's the current situation in Goza? Can you tell us? The current situation in Goza now is that uh, you cannot move out of Goza uh, Two kilometers away from Goza, from town. No, 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 you can't. It's still dangerous. From Goza town? From Goza town. Two kilometers is quite dangerous because many farmers are being, you know, uh, attacked. Two kilometers is But, but Goza has been reclaimed. Goza town has been reclaimed. Yes. So are there people living in Goza now? Of course. Of course. And those who were living at the hamlets, villages before, most of them come in because... What happened is that when Boko Haram came and dispersed most people in, in, within Goza and they fled to Cameroon and other towns, those ones at the villages again came and occupied their houses. You go to my house, you are, I will find like more, maybe five or six families whom I don't know they came from another village. You can't tell them leave my house. So, so those ones in Cameroon come and the rest who own the houses and Adama, they cannot come back and live in their houses now because their houses have been occupied. Who is going to clear those bush for those ones to go back so that the owner of the houses to come? Nothing has been done. Wow. Well, I mean, uh, we don't know if you can hear better now. Um, it, it's usually a difficult scenario, not even wanting to uh you know just rehash any feelings that you might have had previously but in terms of your schooling now how is school and your fees and everything going on are you doing okay is everything fine now at the first time we just had a change but for now we found what you know, at the time you escaped, there were people were still trying to understand what actually happened. So, what is it that you can tell us about how you escaped? Um, I escaped when uh, soldiers went to the forest to fight the Japanese So that's how we escaped and. Then too, they are running to the bush to hide. So, and we too we started running like we are going to hide. And after that, we get our own way, and that's how we escaped. But because of the how the bush big it is, and we don't know where, before we come out, it takes us one month plus. One month plus. Yeah. Wow. Oh dear. 
All right, let, let's. Uh, yeah. Ayo equally has questions for both of you. Ayo, go ahead, please. Thank you, Chamberlain. Let me begin with the with the young lady. Um, I mean, uh, uh, my, my colleague Malcolm was trying to ask you questions about, you know, some of your colleagues the other time. Which one of them do you remember right now who are still in custody, and what can you remember about them? Um, I first remember them that is because the respire we are in captivity, some of them used to encourage me when the senior are crying. So some of them used to encourage me. And if I still see some of them picture of me, so I always remember them. Mm. So which one of them can you remember right now? And what do you think they are going through right now? More especially my friend, Amy Brian, and she's still in that capacity. We have never been separated in that capacity. We are always together. What if I come home during holiday and I see her parents, it always makes me sad. And we understand that there are 92 others. How does that make you feel that they are not back home with their parents? How do you feel about that? Well, I feel so sad because that place is not a good place that you wish that you are friends or somebody. Even you are not relative with that person, but you are seeing that situation in that place. No good for them to live there. So I'm praying that one day they to carry this and have their freedom. Like we have our freedom now, and even to share the happiness, we are always there with our parents. Mm. Them too. So I wish for them. I mean, I I really do feel your pain, and I'm sure many people watching you right now feel the same. But what do you think? is being done to them now how are they how do you think they could be feeling what do you think will be going through their minds right now particularly because of uh, you know i mean it's been 10 years what do you think they are going through now what do you think could have happened to them um um i mean so i they went to sickness through hunger and some things because even now some of them have been a mother of three children, four children, and it's not easy for them in that uh, forest because if you have food for only one person, it's difficult, and you are still taking care of uh, children, and it's not easy to you to go out and find a food for them. So even this may be difficult for them. We also hear, I mean, uh, that some of them were forced to marry uh, the, the people who captured them. Is it true? For me, they didn't force us to get married. But the way they come and play their roles, that if we didn't agree to marry them, we are going to be their slaves. So from that thing, there are some of us, and because of the starting seeking someone to get among us and uh, go with them, so it's because of that, they met some people that so if I'm going to be a slave, let me get married. So that's how some people decide to get married, and some people say that they will take all the need to get. And some of us get mad that maybe it will be a way for them to escape, more especially to person like me. For me, it's not because of their force us to get married. Uh, because I see they're starting, starting their role to take us to this step. So I think that it's good for me to get married to one person so that maybe I'll get the freedom to go anywhere I want so that from that, I will get a way to escape. It will be a way for me. So that's why it's mm -hmm. not so none of the, you don't think any of them was forced to marry anybody? 
It's just because of the rules that are playing and they start taking some of the deals and then to continue their duty as they left. So that's how some people change their mind. It's been 10 years, Amina. Do you think it is difficult for governments to rescue them? Do you think, how, how do you feel about that, that your friends are, do you think it is difficult for government to rescue them? Do you think it is, how difficult is it from what you can tell us to rescue your friends? For me, I think that it's not difficult for government to rescue this yes, because it, he has a many ways to follow to rescue the girl as a leader, and he also know what is happening in his country, then it's kind of difficult to be. Well, thank you so much, Amina, for that. Well, uh, Elder Ayuba John, let, let me come to you now. Um, you have also said the same thing that she said, that I mean, it can't be that difficult. But I'd like to ask you about the community leaders in the environment now, the Goza community, the um, Chibok community. How are they taking all of these things? Because they are the closest to that community. And whatever they do right now is, being, is sending a message one way or the other to the much younger people that are you know, right there in those communities. What are the community leaders doing do you, see, do you think they have anything that they can do? Uh, a typical community uh, along our axis, um, to my understanding, growing up, uh, a community leader has no right uh, apart from what the higher authority gave him. In fact, what he will tell the community or say or a suggestion will have to come from above. So he's afraid of uh, being overthrown. Uh, you can't say anything uh, uh, that is, even, no matter how it itches, it itches you and uh, against the higher authority, you always look forward up. Uh, oh God, what do you want me to say? And try, they will say, no, I'm protecting my food. That is it. Otherwise, uh, Elder if John. They understand just a human second. rights. Just one second. And they understand... When yes. you say yes, yes. from above, who is this person that they go to above? Is it the state government? Is it the local, cha local government chairman? Yes, at the local uh, stage, they, they look forward to uh, the chairman and all, and, and all of that. If you are a village head, you have uh, an EMEA above you, you third class, maybe you now go to first class EMEA, and then the first class EMEA is looking up uh, to the governor uh, in trying to please those that are on, uh, on authority. I never had any uh, village head uh, say anything contrary to what the government wants to hear. They always press them, call them anytime and interview them. They, it is praises, they will be telling them. They won't tell the, well, the, the yearning of the community to, to, to audience. No, 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 no. Okay. Because they are afraid. You well, say, I'm Elder, protecting El, my food. Elder John, Typical it's, Nigerian for you. It's, it's really sad mm -hmm. to hear this. But there's something that you said earlier, and I'm just wondering. Of First of all, to this issue that you raised now, are the police unaware that these things are happening, that, you know... It's not so difficult, as you have said, and as Amina has corroborated, to um, rescue these girls. Are the police aware of the issues happening in the environment? Is there anything they can do? We have police. We have police division within Goza. From police division to where those girls were kept in Goza then is, is, is a, a section of Goza called Goza Wakani maybe a few days after their adoption. Police division was very close, about two kilometers. A strong throw, if I may call it. What were they doing? They are there for Goza, but what did they do? Nothing. Hmm. But Nothing. It's, it's really, really sad and, and heart-wrenching. There's something that you also mentioned the other time about the way the average uh, person lives in that community. 
uh, it's next to the only word that, I, that explains it to me is poverty. And that is the life that you said that people are living on a daily basis. Is the state government aware of the lifestyle of the people, the below par human lifestyles that these people are living? Are they aware? Is there something they could have done to ensure that people are lifted above the level of life that they're living now, which could make them vulnerable, as you said, to get joining these terrorist, you know, gangs? Yes, but if there is no, that, uh, there is no education, uh, how do you get a capital and then begin to build a businesses on, on it? And uh, how can a bank uh, trust one that is an illiterate, doesn't know what bank is? How can, um, you know, um, the authority even trust you? Where is the collateral? You, you don't even know what is collateral. You don't have certificate. You cannot, uh, you know, be able to sit down and produce uh, uh, a good feasibility studies uh, for, for your business. Uh, what, what they would do is just, uh, yes, we can give you 20,000, 20,000, go and establish during campaign. So, 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 can you take 50,000? There was a time uh, our, at, at the abattoir in Meduguri, most of our village guys who could, do, do not, uh, you know, join the Boko Haram, but they have been sympathizers all this while, were given to 200,000, uh, 250,000 naira each by the then former governor, now our humble vice president, you know. But where was that money? I don't know where the, the money is. None of them become millionaire. None of them become Tanzania. <laughs> back to square one. They are still getting meat from their boss to go and still sell and get 1,000 per day. So how do you leave somebody's economy? Is someone who, who doesn't even know uh, economy uh, to improve, you know. How does elections go on in those places with all of this that goes on? Um, the election <clears throat> is a kind of, uh, and I say what Nigeria will say, boji boji. Uh, you just oh. use uh, your authority and then have some strong few guys who, 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 know, who can stamp it at, 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 uh, for you and then declare. declare. That's what happened? What happened at the former election? Uh, not to expose my leader, but I respect him. It's, it's, it's my... It's my, it's my younger, younger uh, in age, you know, uh, our first class emir. Confess to me. Actually, this is the party that won. But to protect my food, we have to declare so, so, so party. So what do you do? Nothing. That fear is still there. Those who are outside Goza now, who came to Abuja and other areas now, are beginning to know. Ah, so I have right as a, as a citizen. While living there, <laughs> you don't believe there's any right on us. It is what they want to do that you are to dance today. Do you think things will change, either with the elections uh, or with the kidnapping situation? It's going to be very, 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 very difficult. Very, very difficult. I don't know whether. When, 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 when people that are outside now go back to, to Goza, will now begin to educate those ones that are there. We have right. We are Nigerians. Out there, we are the same. It is here that they kept di dividing us religiously and then social group and, and the rest. But out there, if you go out there, everybody lives the same. So we have to fight for our rights. Otherwise, if you continue this way, maybe, no wonder they don't want... Uh, to clear those other areas mm. where those people that are outside right. could come back and occupy their places. I don't know. All right. We'll have to thank you for coming on. Elder Ayubaju Ambasa is the National Coordinator, Goza Christian Community Association. We also have to thank you, Amina Alinkeki, for at least uh, joining us this morning. We wish you all the best as you continue your schooling in AU and Yola. Thank you and all the best to you. Thank you. All right. So business, it's uh, business news on Sunrise. It is on the hour. Lady will be taking us through that one. So stay on with us.